And the Obama is unstoppable, Obama is unbeatable, there's no good Republican, Republicans aren't satisfied. Um, that is the new drumbeat of the mainstream media. Uh, you're constantly hearing that from uh, just about everyone. Uh, because everything right now is seen through the prism of re-electing this guy they helped elect in the first place. And Evan Bayh, who's the former governor of Indiana, the former senator uh, from Indiana, is now a Fox News contributor. And I've grown to like Evan Bayh over the years. I'm going to like Juan Williams, too, who I'm going to play in a second. Um, but they have picked up this narrative. And it's funny, it's interesting when Democrats try to tell Republicans who they should pick. You know, I, I always find that, why would we listen to them? You know, it, it's interesting, but Evan Bayh has bought in to this idea that uh, there's a big hubbub about Mike Huckabee's not running, Mitch Daniels isn't running, Donald Trump's not running, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know how serious of contenders some of them were. I'm not sure Trump was real serious. I, I, I don't know that much about Mitch Daniels. And Huckabee, I think, has just got too good of a gig on Fox News on his weekend show uh, to run. And I, I, don't, I don't know that it's shocking. I don't know why people are shocked that they've decided not to. I, I don't really get it. But... oh. Evan Bayh has picked up this, um, this narrative that Obama can't be beaten. Now listen to this little exchange here that he has on Chris Wallace's show uh, a couple Sundays ago. Watch this. How much things have changed since last November, Chris? I mean, look, the president was on the ropes then. The Republicans had a big victory. Now establishing Republicans are running from this race uh, you know, as fast as they can. This is good news for the president. It's going to be a protracted contest in which they'll dissipate resources while he can build his war chest. They're going to have to appeal to the Tea Party movements in Iowa, South Carolina, New Hampshire, while he can move to the middle and appeal to independents and moderates. So the, the establishment Republicans are left with Pawlenty and Romney. They seem to be unhappy with that, which raises the prospect of perhaps some outside person coming in. And you see a repetition of what happened in Delaware and to a lesser extent in Nevada and Colorado last time, a nominee who just doesn't appeal to the middle. This is all good news for President Obama. Are there, is there anybody out there like a Christie, like a Ryan, like a Jeb Bush? Who would scare you? Well, uh, Christie is uh, an interesting candidate. I have a fondness for former governors, but he's only been there two years, and he's got continued budget wars going on, and what's his foreign policy experience? Uh, Paul, so, right, you, 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 you could see one of your guests earlier today, uh, my, uh, Minority Leader McConnell, sort of distancing himself, although he personally is going to support the Ryan budget. I mean, that's a cudgel waiting to beat him over the head with. So it's just, there's not a lot of there there. They're good people, but I, I think this is a referendum on uh, jobs, gasoline prices and the deficit. It's the president's to lose at this point. And uh, the Republicans are going to have a very messy primary uh, situation. They should be <laughs> oh, but Obama's appealing to the middle? In what way, Senator By? He's proposed tons of new spending. He's done nothing to lower the deficit. Gas, I mean, oh, um, what did he say at the end there? Um, this election is going to be about jobs, gas prices and the deficit, if that's the case, Obama's got no chance. Absolutely no chance whatsoever if that's what this election is about. I mean, Obama's not going to go out there and talk about gas prices. He's not going to go out there and do that. He'd be crazy to do that. So I don't understand that narrative there that, that um, Obama can appeal. What's he going to do? Is he to appeal to the middle? Okay, this president is either going to have to disavow some of the things he's done or make a real effort, I mean a real effort, to work with Boehner and Ryan and Mike Pence and Cantor and Bachman and those guys in the House. I mean, he's going to have to sit at the table and roll up his sleeves and get to work on this. And I, I don't know, I, just, I don't see that happening. I see him sitting back. Letting the Republicans take the lead, which is the absolute opposite of what a president should be doing, shows me how gutless he is. And I, I just, I'm perplexed at that anyone thinks this president is unbeatable. How do you come to that conclusion? You know, in 1991 and in 2003, it looked like both President Bushes could be beat by anybody. And we know what happened. Bush Sr. got beat. George W. could have gotten beat. We saw this in 1995. Bill Clinton was a president shot and wounded. He came back and won. The idea that, you know, 18 months before an election, we can just call it off and just not have it. And you look at the electoral map. I mean, you look at states like North Carolina, states like Virginia, states like Indiana. I mean, I, I can't see the president carrying any of those. 
how, how can he run in a landscape better than 2008? You know, and he, he, you know, McCain still won what, 23, 24 states? I mean, I just, I don't understand it. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that they're worried, they're scared, they're trying to get this out there, get it into the mindset of people, depress Republicans, depress their morale, depress their fundraising. Uh, there's got to be some sort of uh, attempt to do this here. Now, Juan Williams here then talks about the Republican field and how Republicans aren't satisfied with that field. And if we're not, why should we be listening to Juan Williams, who's Democratic on most issues? I mean, I, again, he's a guy I've grown to like. He's an honest guy. Uh, he's a nice guy. But why are we? Why should Republicans listen to this right here? Listen. Big bucks, which have yet to be, this, you know, deposited in any account. Uh, despite Mitt Romney's claim that he got 10 million in one day, it's just not that impressive if you look at it. So, the, the big money, and I think especially the Bush money, and a lot of money that comes after the Citizens United uh, decision, which is independent dollars, have yet to flow in support of any one Republican. And so everybody's looking at that. Mitch Daniels, I think, would have been the logical place. He's got the experience, he can make the argument in terms of the poor economic performance, in terms of gas prices and the like. He's not going. So I think right now, I wrote a column for FoxNews.com this week. I said, it's like, you know, please, Mr. Custer, I don't want to go among Republicans. Nobody wants to get out there. Most Republicans, Liz, by the way, say they are very dissatisfied with this field. You and know not my Republican friends are talking about. I can read polls. <laughs> you know what? You know, you're my friend. But I'm just telling you. But I just have a rough white line. It's not a, most right. Republicans yeah. aren't happy with this field. Right. Oh, it's not impressive, I guess, for Mitt Romney to raise $10 million one day. Ah, oh, that's nothing. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Again, I mean, like I said, I like Mr. Williams, but I mean, Republicans aren't happy with the field. Yeah, well, everybody's not in yet. Republicans are still waiting to see who emerges, who. I mean, we, it was seven months from the first caucus or primary. I mean, were Democrats loving their field in May of 2003? Were Democrats loving their field in May or June of 1991? Were they loving their field in 1975? I mean, what, I, I, again, it's back to this narrative. They're all reading from the same playbook here. 